Hey, everybody. Welcome to uh, the Mark Parham podcast. My name is Mark Parham. You can follow me on Twitter at twitter.com forward slash Mark Parham underscore. Again, M-A-R-K-P-A-R-H-A-M is in Mary underscore. I wanted to talk about two people. I wanted to talk about uh, Jim Cramer and I wanted to talk about Tucker Carlson. Uh, so let me start with Jim Cramer. Um, Jim Cramer is a uh, you know, a personality. And he, I think he has a show mad money on, um, CNBC. He gives out financial advice. You know, he's been on that network for a while. He's a star on that network. People know him. And, uh, he was wrong again. I looked at, uh, somebody showed an old clip online of him talking about, uh, Silicon Valley bank. And he was talking about how good the bank is and all this other stuff. And, you know, the, the, it, you know, you know, how he talks and says, oh, there's nothing to worry about or sort of gives off that air. And, uh, you know, again, he was wrong again, just like he was wrong about what happened with uh, Bear Stearns in the, uh, what is it, 2007 or 2008 when he was telling everybody, oh, everything's OK. And, you know, it's a good company and all this other mess. And uh, it's amazing that uh, Jim Cramer still has a job. You know, this man has been wrong about so much stuff to the point where uh, I saw uh, something where, you know, people were saying almost do the opposite of everything he tells you to do. He gives out all this investment advice and, you know, people, you know, I think he had one show where people were calling in and he would say, oh, do this, invest in that. And, you know, the numbers are great over here and over there. And it's just like he shouldn't even have his job. I mean, I don't know any other place where you can make all of you can give out so much bad advice and still actually you know, have a job to come to. Um, it, it's amazing that CNBC still keeps this guy on. I turned to the channel a few days ago and he was on there, you know, talking about something else. I mean, he must know somebody, you know, or know a few people, you know, in high places because how this man still has a job. It's amazing to me. And, uh, anybody else would be fired for giving out such bad advice year after year. Uh, I was, uh, you almost look at everything and say to yourself, well, you know, do the opposite If Jim Cramer says the sky is uh, blues, you know, it must be green outside. I mean, that's how bad his advice is. And, uh, you know, he was so wrong about this uh, Silicon Valley uh, bank situation. And, uh, you know, a, a lot of folks were, but I just had to get that out of the way because this man is horrible. I mean, he gives horrible uh, business advice. It's almost like CNBC is a, I would call it the financial entertainment network because it's almost like financial entertainment, like where they just give their opinions on just, stuff they don't know about and folks are supposed to believe them. So I just had to get that out of the way. I think this man is uh, just, he's horrible at uh, telling people what to do when it comes to money. Um, also, I want to talk about uh, Tucker Carlson. I think Tucker Carlson is a hero. And I'm going to tell you why. And I say this is, again, not to put the racial thing on it. I'm just going to say as a black man, because so many people, you know, every time, He's on TV and he's talking about certain things. People say, oh, well, he's a racist and this and that. So I just want to get that point out of the way. I don't think he's a racist. I think he's a hero. I think, you know, he's somebody in the news media that, you know, he's, he's, he's shaking things up. Journalists used to do that or people who had television shows and they used to do that on CNN and MSNBC. They used to invite people on that were, you know, had beliefs they didn't believe in and, you know, it, 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 the the landscape of media used to be like that. It used to be more, I would say, it was partisan, but it was nonpartisan when it came to certain shows and stuff. And uh, I admire Tucker Carlson for, you know, just listening to different perspectives. He has Democrats on. He has Republicans on. He sometimes will talk about things that people don't think he should talk about. And I think that's a great thing. I mean, we don't want uh, media organizations to be so predictable. If you look at MSNBC and CNN, you can predict what they're going to say. I mean, you can predict the news. You can literally say, OK, well, they're going to invite this person on. And I guarantee you they're going to talk about Donald Trump. I mean, if Donald Trump itches his leg, you have somebody from CNN or MSNBC, you know, come out and, well, Trump itched his leg. And I think that's a violation of code such and such and such. Like they call it uh, Trump derangement syndrome online. And I think, you know, that's what it is. And I, they talk about Trump so much, I think, because Trump... They don't like the guy, but uh, you know Trump gives these uh, legacy media networks high ratings. You see, when they don't talk about Trump, how the ratings are down. So, you know that that's one of the reasons. But you know, back to Tucker Carlson, he's somebody he shakes things up, and, and we should want journalists that go in there and shake things up and that make people think and make people feel a certain way. 
You know, I, the news right now, it's just like, well, I don't want to hurt a certain person's feelings and all this other stuff. It's like, no, that's that's not journalism. Journalism is to expose things. And I think he did that with this uh, January 6th uh, situation. Not saying, again, I'm not a person that believes that anybody should be trespassing on uh, government property. So don't take this as, oh, well, I think everything that happened there was correct. And no, it's not that I agree with what any of those people did. But the narrative that they were trying to put out there when it came to certain individuals was incorrect. I mean, if you look at the video, the way they described those situations, I mean, people in Congress described it one way and the video told another story. And so whether you agree or disagree with those people there, and I'm not necessarily a person who agrees with everything they did there or any of the stuff they did there. So I want to put that out there. But I mean, you had a lot of politicians that came out and said, oh, well, we saw the videos and this is what happened. And so, again, you always hear about these statistics where they say politicians are ranked sort of at the bottom as far as trust. Well, this just goes to, you know, confirm what a lot of people think. I mean, it took folks on Twitter and the Gateway Pundit and, you know, other news sites, independent news sites to actually, you know, give the real story. That's why I say you you almost find more journalism when you go to or better. You almost find, you know, people with more common sense on sites like Twitter and the Gateway Pundit than you, than you do, you know, mainstream legacy media. I mean, so many of these uh, people on legacy uh, mainstream media are, like I said, they make their money by the private sector and pharmaceutical companies and, you know, giving speeches to certain organizations and stuff, they're scared to, you know, shake things up. And so, uh, you know, I, I just, I just respect them for having the courage to do this. I hope more people come forward with, you know, you know, just great stories, stories, you know, where we think one thing and it's really something else. And uh, again, Tucker's Tucker's been on Fox for a while after that. I wasn't a fan of him, you know, a long time ago, I used to see him with the little bow ties and stuff. And so, again, this is back when I was a, a liberal. I used to be a huge liberal back in the days. But, you know, as I've gotten more conservative, you know, and now I consider myself a libertarian because, you know, you have some Republicans who act like Democrats. So I've switched over to the Libertarian Party. But again, I still respect what he's doing. And uh, I don't care if you're liberal, uh, Democrat, Republican, conservative. It's just like we need people in the news to tell the truth and to expose things. And uh, so many Democrats came out with this narrative that everybody was doing this and this happened and that happened. And so if you believe, if you listen to them, you'd be like, well, you know, oh, well, this must be true. And it's just like some of the, it, I think it was uh, one guy in the video looked like he was being let in by some of the, uh, the policemen in DC. Like they tried to make it like he, I think rushed in and all this other stuff. It was one of the men, but uh, it looked like, you know, they were taking him on a tour. I think it was the guy with the uh, horns on and the, face paint or something. I forget his name, but you know, the, the narrative that was put out there, it's almost like uh, the situation with the Russian, I think it was a Russian dossier with Donald Trump. And, you know, it's just like, what do they say? If you tell a lie a bunch of times, people believe it. And that's what some of these Democrats did. They just kept on pushing this lie and this narrative and folks ate it up. People believed it. And, you know, it, it's a mess. It is what it is. But again, let's not go after journalists for, you know, this country was built off of free speech. Let's not go after people who believe in free speech. I think once we get to a point where we want to censor people and silence people, I mean, that's what they're trying to do to Tucker Carlson. They're trying to silence him. There's some people within Fox News that don't want him to speak out and all this other stuff. It's like if we don't exercise, you know, some of our rights, we're going to lose them. If We don't, you know, say to ourselves, you know, I live in a free speech country. I have the right to say what I want to say. If we just sit and we're censoring each other and we can't go online and we can't say this and that because we're scared of hurting people's feelings, then we're going to lose some of our rights. I mean, what makes America so beautiful is that we have a first amendment and a second amendment, in my opinion. And uh, we have to hold on to those things. You know, we have to fight for those things every day. And that's, that's one of the reasons why I started this podcast. It's like, again, if you're going to allow me to be able to say what I want to say, then I'm going to say what I want to say. And, uh, you know, once we start self-censoring and all this other stuff, that's when we, we get down a slippery slope. Because once we do that, we'll be like these other countries where if you say the wrong thing online, you can be fined or put to jail. Like some of these other countries, if you say the wrong thing, I mean, they can throw you in jail. Like what kind of mess is that? That's crazy. And so, you know, if, if, we, if, if we don't want to be like those other countries, we've got to speak out. 
I would even tell anybody, if you're listening to this, start a podcast, start a blog, start a vlog, you know, do something, speak out. Even if you're, you're not into politics, if you have an opinion, like all, a lot of us do say something because your opinion might affect someone's life. It might affect a policy. It might actually, you know, get up to the politicians. You might start something where other people join in on it and say, well, you know what, this changed my perspective. But um, we're in a time right now where everybody should spe be speaking out. I don't care if you're liberal, Democrat, Republican, conservative, like everybody needs to speak out. And if there's things that you don't like, you know, a politician, you know, some of their policies, if you don't like certain things in government, you know, speak out. You have the right to you know, speak out and, and, and say what you want to say. And uh, I think it's uh, that's that's what Tucker Carlson's doing uh, in his his next move will probably be going. He'll probably end up. Uh, you know, maybe leaving Fox News. I don't know if, if, if their relationship is still good, but I mean, if he left Fox News and did his own thing, he would still draw in a lot of people. Like, I think a lot of journalists now are saying, well, wait a minute, we don't need legacy media. Legacy media is, you know, it's it's on its deathbed because they're not really reporting anything like they used to. But someone like a Tucker Carlson, he could go on Rumble. He can, you know, create his own thing. And he doesn't have to necessarily be under Fox News. I mean, he's built such a brand and he's built his name up to the point where he can do it independently. And, and I want more of these journalists to do that because just sitting on a network, spewing the same talking points over and over again. And as soon as you say something, they want to, you know, take off the news story or censor it or hide the video. It's like that. That's crazy. It's crazy where we talk about other countries and we, we talk about other countries and we encourage journalists in Mexico and all these other places to speak out in free speech. But it's like, look at how we try to silence, you know, the people who work in the media in, in our country, in America. So we can't preach to all these other places when we're sort of doing the same thing. So uh, we need more people like Tucker Carlson, whether you agree with him or not. I mean, I don't think he's a racist like everybody's trying to say, because every time, you know, when they can't you know, make an argument against this guy. Oh, he's a racist and he's a Trump supporter and this and that. They always say those things because they can't debate you on certain issues. So it's, it's just like what a lot of people do in the politics. It's like any time, you know, they don't agree with what you're doing. Well, that's hate speech and you shouldn't be able to say that. It's like, again, we can't be sensitive about everything. This is a, again, it's, 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 a, it's, a, it's, it's, it's a cold world, but, you know, people have to toughen up. I mean, we, we can't treat every situation and every person with kid gloves. Oh, my God, he said my sneakers were too big. Oh, I'm going to cry and go into the corner. I mean, you'll never make it in life if you sit up and you want to just turn your back and cry every time something has, somebody has some feedback for you. So uh, I like what Tucker, Tucker Carlson is doing, and I hope he keeps doing more of it. I hope he uh, you know, keeps this uh, January 6th issue out in the forefront. And, uh, you know, I, 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 just, I just hope he doesn't sit up and you know start censoring himself and oh well i'm trying to keep my job and i'm worried about what fox news is going to say and i mean he's built such a name where if he does his thing independently those same viewers from fox news will actually leave and go to his websites is you know he can do this thing by himself and i hope more journalists do do start doing things by themselves i think now you have platforms like substack and rumble and in in all of these different platforms that will allow you to say what you want to say and even with the platforms i think uh, I, I want to see more conservatives create their own you know social media websites and stuff like that i think that's needed and i also want more conservatives to support conservatives the only way we're going to grow these networks and, and and grow these websites and stuff like that is by supporting each other just like the liberals do the liberals start a television show they invite other liberals on they invite them to their podcast and i think that conservatives need to or conservatives, libertarians, whatever, need to start doing the same thing. Start reaching out to these people and you know, invite them on your shows, your podcasts, and just create a whole ecosystem. And that's the only way that uh, you know the the, the truth is going to come out. Because some of these companies have even messed with people's banking. Some of these companies have deplatformed people. Look at uh, you know, what's happened to some conservatives where they few years ago lost their Twitter account. I mean, some of these people had followings of millions of people and they just in a second they can, you know, shut you down. And so it's very important for conservatives, libertarians to start creating their own sites, supporting each other. And then also if you're tired of, you know, the whole big tech and Apple and Microsoft thing, try Linux. 
I mean, I'm, I'm a person. I moved over to uh, Linux. I have um, on my computer, I have something called Artix Linux. It's amazing. It boots up very fast. And I use a lot of programs that aren't mainstream, but they still do their job. You know, a lot of the times these tech companies want to lock you into their services and their websites. And you think, well, if I want to put out a video, I have to or, or edit something. I have to do it through using some from Apple or using some from Google. Like, no, there's alternatives now. And uh, the only way those alternatives will get better is if people donate to them, if people support them. So uh, I want people to go out there and just uh, support Tucker. I know he has a huge fan base, but I mean, even if you dislike Fox, support this man because he's doing a lot. I mean, there's a lot of journalists who would be afraid to do or have the courage to put out the truth. And I mean, they, the, the Democrats can spin it all they want, but, you know, a video is a video. If it's unedited and it's, it's what happened, then it's what happens. It's just like they want you to Democrats think you're foolish where I see something with my own eyes. But, you know, my own eyes are lying to me. It's like that's the, all this these mind games and stuff. That's almost like what they're trying to do with this transgender thing. Like, oh, well, it's OK. No, it's not OK. We've seen video where there's been uh, people who are a little bit stronger than women playing in women's sports and dominating. And they're not even women. And so they want you to believe, you know, don't believe your, your own instincts, but they want you to believe the lies they push out. And so I'm happy that this new generation, it seems like they're not being caught up in the matrix. The stories are getting pushed out. I mean, I'm seeing more alternative platforms and uh, I just, you know, just we need to keep it going. And so uh, that, that that's basically all I want to say. But keep supporting uh, Tucker Carlson. I know I will. He's not a racist. I think he's a hero right now. We need more journalists like him and uh we need more networks and more websites and more people to put out stories that actually are going to make a difference in the world, not just something paid for, sponsored by a uh, big pharmaceutical or big tech company. So that's all I want to say. Uh, Tucker Carlson, do your thing. Even if you're not on Fox, you have a loyal fan base. They will, you know, as they say on the streets, ride for you and, you know, uh, support you. I know I will. And uh, I want people listening to this podcast to support Tucker Carlson. He's, he's doing an amazing job. And, uh, Again, if you have something, I, I know I said it earlier, but if you have something, an issue that you want to, you know, put out into the public, start a podcast, you know, start a, a YouTube channel, a Rumble channel, do something, speak out. And uh, again, thank you for listening to uh, my podcast. I might have been rambling a little bit, but I know I just have to get this out. Also, uh, again, you can find my podcast on most major uh, podcast platforms. Um, again, if you type in Mark, uh, M-A-R-K. Parham, P-A-R-H-A-M is in Mary podcast. Um, I'll, you know, I'll be there. So again, thank you for listening to my podcast. I plan to create more podcasts, not necessarily on politics, but just on, it could be food, sports, entertainment, just a bunch of stuff. But uh, thank you for your support and uh, have a great day.